Yo, welcome back, RV family. I am your host, Tarius, and this is Rhythm and Views. We're back again. We have somebody extremely special, you know, and, um, you know, he was in a group thing. You know, I was in a group thing. Neek was in my group. Big Boy's in the group. And so uh, that's, that holds a near and dear special place in all of our hearts, man. So, um, but yeah, man, this is your home for reactions and all things entertainment and great interviews. And uh, to my left, my right, my left, my left, your left, my right, is uh, my co-host, Nico609 from R&B Uncensored. And he's with us and he's, you know, my co-host for this baby. You know, we're about to do this, baby. Neek, what you got, man? All right, lady. Ladies, ladies, and bald-headed babies, it's the kid, Nico609. We have a very, 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 very special guest today. Um, we, we done brought you some special guests, but this guest mm -hmm. is real near and dear to us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you may have seen this brother on a very, very popular TV show back in the day by the name of Saved by the Bell. It was actually Saved by the Bell, the, the, new, the new class. Uh, for those who don't know, go Google that. It was a great show. Mm -hmm. Um, this brother, man, we, we, we wound up seeing him when he got in a group with it, with his three other brothers, well, excuse me, four other brothers, uh, Jared, Papa, who was the other, uh, Jacob and Grady. Mm -hmm. With no further ado, we're going to get into this brother's story, give him his, his flowers. Please put your left hand, your right hand, your ears, both ears, your nostrils, clap it up. Please bring okay. us and welcome to the show, Mr. and Mr. Anthony Orell. Make some noise. Clap it, up, right. clap it up. 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 Yes. We're glad to have you, man. We're definitely glad to have you. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for meeting us today, man. And uh, man, I got I got a ton of questions for you, but I'm gonna let Nico ahead and, and start it off, man, with his monologue and all that. Well, he did that already, but um, go ahead, Nico. What we got to talking about? What's, what's up first? All right, so Thanks for having me, fellas. Oh, right, no cool. problem, man. Thank you. All right. So first off, um, coming from such a musical family. Tell the people where you from, brother. Tell them, tell them. We already told them who you are, Mr. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep calling you that, even though we all around the same age and shit. But we're going to call you Mr. out of respect right. to who you and what you are. So, Mr. Anthony Harrell, tell the people where you from and what, what musical family you come from, brother. All right. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on you guys' show. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate when you reached out to me. Um, and we just so it showed so much love uh to you know everything that i've done that just it, it warms my heart brother and i appreciate it my name is anthony harrell i um am from uh born in los angeles california born and raised kind of sort of i uh, uh when i when i say kind of sort of i mean i was born here with my brother Grady, who's my older brother, who's a year older than me. And then uh, my mom took us to Denver, Colorado when I was like two years old uh, to okay. live there for like 10 years. So I spent like a, a great deal of my childhood in Denver, Colorado growing up with my great, great grandmother. And then I came back with my brother Grady when I was like 11, 12 uh, to LA to pursue my musical career. So, uh, and then um, uh, we ended up forming our group. I'll speed up. We end up no, you, hey, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. We're not doing none of that shit sure? up stuff. All right, this all is right. your moment. This is your time, brother. So okay, we're going to talk. You. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay. Because I want to I wanna know about Papa's results because that was one of the groups that you had. Oh, so that's wow. so that's one of my questions, Papa's results, because you had a cousin. You go ahead. You get to that, brother. Tell your story, brother. Okay. So, yeah, I, I won't speed it up. I'll take my time a little bit. So when I got here from uh, Denver, Colorado to Los Angeles, my dad, he immediately went in on us. We started rehearsing and, 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 and uh, auditioning and stuff for movies. And I think my first big part was the Jackson 5 miniseries. I, I, that was one of my questions. Go ahead, yeah, brother. Yeah, that was amazing for me, man. When I was 13 or 14, I got the opportunity to sing. Uh, it was uh, Michael Jackson's voice, but it was really my voice when he was a little guy on the wow. Jackson 5 miniseries. It's called American Dream. Remember yep. what, uh, Andrew 1992, Bass? guys, 1992. He's yeah. taking you on a time warp. So if you go back and look at that that series, uh, when he was a little guy, uh, Michael Jackson, I think my verse was first premiered when he sang Climb Every Mountain in the talent show. That was really my voice. Wow. And, uh, so that was my first job. And uh, I was off and running, man. Like it was, I knew that's what I wanted to do, sing my entire life. and. Me and Grady, uh, then we formed what you said, Popper's Results, Christopher, you said, I can't believe you know about that. That's crazy, 
<laughs> um, we, do re- we do our re- listen brother before you go any further with fans here bro not, not not only respecting you as a man as a father but fans so while we here we gonna clap it up for the brother as Thanks, he's telling man. his story man clap it up Thanks. for the brother and uh go ahead continue continue brother all right so uh the first taste that i got of a group was with papa's results it was um it wasn't the original Papa's Results. Uh, my dad had stole the name from his own self. The original was my dad and his like auntie and his his um, my uncle Don and their old friends back in like the 60s, 70s. So then um, he was like, why don't y'all just steal the name? So we stole it and I formed a group with me, my older brother Grady and my cousin Kanela, who could sang her tail off. And uh, we did that for a few years, sang at like all the clubs in the Hollywood area. Carlos and Charlie's that my dad used to establish back in the day. Um, and uh, then we moved on. I, I did all type of parts in acting, which I was blessed to do. Say by the Bell, which I heard you mention. Say by the new class. This was like when Zach and them had left. Zach and Mario Lopez had left and they started a new class. It wasn't really that popular, but Screech was still on it. And uh, it was a hell of a, an experience. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. to Screech, man. Dustin Diamond, that was my, my guy. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I did that when I was 18, 19, 20, 21. Those were probably, if not the best years of my life, some of the best. And wow. uh, uh, moving on, uh, I did a whole lot of music from, from that until then. We got signed to Dr. Dre. We got signed to Elektra. We got signed to MCA. Oh, but, uh, oh, 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 slow down, slow down a little bit. We're going to get to that. Let's slow down a little bit. We got to, right, let's, right. let's, let's go back to 1992, brother. Okay. Um, Because a lot of us thought that Jason Weaver was singing all of the parts. Yeah, we knew thought, Jason, yeah. we knew Jason was singing his parts. Yeah. But when I heard Climb Every Mountain, I'm like, that sound like Jason, but it don't sound like Jason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to find out that it was you, that, that surprised me when I, when I was doing my research. Another thing that surprised me is that there's a gentleman, and we're going to call him Mr. Grady Harrell, which is your father. He's the second, right? Your brother's my the father, third, right? My, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So with, with Mr. Grady, he actually was Jackie Wilson. When Michael Jackson was backstage, he was like, oh, that's Jackie Wilson. I got to meet him. That was my pops. That's his pops. Wow. So when I just to notice that 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 you come from that. And, and for those who don't know, man, if you get a chance, go to his, uh, look up his Instagram, look him up. If you haven't seen the show, brother, go look. Uh, back in the day, you guys used to do YouTubes. And brother, like I put you in the category of lead singers as Ralph Treasure. All your brothers can sing. But oh, yeah. when you yep. when you guys did Change Is Gonna Come mm-hmm. and that wall, that wall, the Wallflower, John. Oh, Wildflower, yeah. Wildflower. Bro, you yeah. sung that, you sung that shit so cold. Your brother Jared was like, Damn, damn. <laughs> what he say? He said, damn. He said, sing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You bro, was on the you, stairs? Yeah, you was on the stairs, brother. You a powerful vocalist, man. And I didn't want to get past yep. that without, 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 you know, we want to take our time, man. We want to, don't, don't rush through your moments in life, brother, because you got some, bro, I, I used to watch Say By The Bell as a kid, bro. I remember seeing you on there. I'm like, damn, it's like getting cool. He cool, bro. Like, you just seem like... <laughs> You know, after the last yo time. yo he's yo Nick he's a dope ass performer too. Let's not even skip bro, over that. Like bro. dancer, Solid. entertainer. I see him move. <laughs> he's cold. Solid. Solid. So let's take our time. Let's let's live in these moments, bro, because these are your moments, and you said these were the best times of your life. So yes, we sir. don't want to we don't want to minimize them and put them in a little box. We want to keep right. them. You know what I'm saying? Let let motherfucker talk your let, shit. Let the, let the flowers glow that we that the, let the flowers grow that we trying to give you. Uh, <laughs> talk, your shit, talk your shit, man. Because for people people don't know, not only are you a singer, you're a songwriter, you're a producer. Yo, you're amazing talent, bro. So, and this ain't no no. Uh, I'm trying to use because my, my partner Terry say I yeah. curse a lot. So yeah, I'm trying for editing for you. editing purpose. Yeah, yeah, for editing purposes. If y'all can help me, yeah. If y'all can help me out yeah, just a little I bit. I, <laughs> yeah, I can clean it up. Yeah, yeah, now. <laughs> Fuck all that. We're gonna make him work. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 gotta we gotta understand, bro, and, and celebrate. All right, we get to all that shit, man, because we got a long interview. So in '92, you did that. Um, take us back to the Save by the Bell years, brother. Like Save by the Bell, what was it like doing it with a legend like like the guy that plays Screech and being in those moments, going on set. You know, what was what was those moments for those that had, that may ask, have aspirations of being an actor? What was that like? Uh, what was those auditions like? 
when I say it was the time of my life, man, I mean that. I mean, I, I, I was a young guy who who was on TV every Saturday, man, with with Screech. Just like you said, I mean, I I'm the type of person who, you know, I I, I live in the moment when stuff like that is happening. I don't I don't get too excited in the moment because I'm enjoying myself so much. It's not until somebody asks me questions and I'm able to look back and, and think about it and be like, man, that that, that, that dish was crazy. But uh, Street Dustin was great, man. He was funny as a mother, mm. mother bubber every day. He was <laughs> cracking up. Um, uh, the directors would be <laughs> like, t- everybody would have to do, listen to the directors. Like, they said cut, and they said action. When they said cut, he just would keep going. They was like, cut, Dustin, cut. He'd be like, fight, fight. <laughs> he, he would just make everybody shut up. He had me cracking up. But anyway, that. Uh, all the my brothers, not all my brothers, because Jake and Pop was a little young at the time. They never came to the set, but Grady, all my friends at the time that I went to high school with, came to the set, and you already know what we did to that mug. We turned it out. Yes, sir. There you go. As you should. As you should. <laughs> Yo, T, before before I ask before I ask, before you ask your question, see, I do have a question that I've always wanted to ask you. Um, mm-hmm. back when Brandy released her first album, right? Mm-hmm. There's a song called uh, "Dedicate," right? Mm-hmm. That's on the album. Mm-hmm. And she she mentions two people. She says, I want to thank Little Grady and I want to thank Anthony. Stevie Wonder, um, who else? Anthony, Grady, Little Grady. Up. Mm-hmm. Are y'all the Little Grady and Anthony that Brandy's thinking on her on her album on that song? Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh. And I, I, wow. um, Put R&B head. Put R&B head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put R&B head. Yes, yes. I haven't thanked Brandy publicly for that too much. Maybe I have, but I, I that's one of my my oldest dearest friends and and I, I thank her for even doing that, you know, and, and put me in that category and thanking me so much, man. That's I love her. I love her to the end of the earth, man. That's the first yeah, she the so, first city that I up. that I stole it. Cause I wasn't old enough to have a job, but I went to the store <laughs> and I clipped that John and I kept it going. Mm-hmm. And I played that from back to front, front to back. And that song Dedicate was one of the songs that she said your name and I didn't realize it until the actual TV show Brother to Brother. Yeah. I'm like, I think she's talking about these two dudes. Yeah. So wow. thank you for that confirmation, brother. That's sure. awesome. Sure. Yo, that's yeah. awesome right there. I, I feel like you know there's this there's so much ground to cover i don't even know where to freaking start man yeah. um <laughs> so so go ahead through your through your journey man so after um you know uh saved by the bell uh after what was saved by the bell yeah um oh yeah okay so during saved by the bell i met this dude named melman right uh mm-hmm. actually i met him i had already known him um because we were signed to dre sometime right mm-hmm. As I was on Say by the Bell, I don't. I'm, I'm real. My memory is bad, but I know mm. we were signed, and I was doing Say by the Bell at the same time, one year. Mm. Wow. So, okay. Mailman, who I met, um, he's one of the, the staff producers that used to be on Aftermath. He produced the Chronic 2001 with Dre. That okay. was my man uh, at the mm. time. He used to come back and forth on set, and uh, you know, we just had a great time, man. And we were signed to Dre, and I got a chance to learn how to produce. Um, though, that's why I said it was the best time of my life. So, mm-hmm. don't know. Okay. I can keep going, but I don't want to get too long winded, you know. Bro, no, listen, <laughs> listen, King, listen, I'm gonna call you what you are, King. Thank you. Bro. All that, all that other, <laughs> this ain't that, this ain't that show, this rhythm and views. It's the rhythm, the rhythm's the pulse. Yeah. You're the heartbeat. Mm-hmm. This is your views on your life. This is your life, bro. Yeah. This is yeah. you, so. So, you, you said you had a. Um, you're working on a deal at that time right so uh mm-hmm. what deal what deal was that can you go in a little, little uh, more so detail we, about that music we were signed to aftermath man when dre first started aftermath we were one of the I, I would say about 12 to 15 acts that he signed um wow. and uh the only, i won't take you through what i mean we had a the time of our lives we recorded songs mm-hmm. it's great mm-hmm. ultimately uh eminem came on and that was awesome. Oh, you get okay, what I'm saying? Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. That, there that is, you know what I'm saying? No, mm-hmm. no harm, no foul. He took M right. and all the other artists before that kind of went into the background. But it made sense that he took M and M, and M and M became the great artist that he became. And he put right. all his energy into him. So there it was there. Wow, that's yeah. Because yeah, I was about to ask you, like, what happened? Like, did that project ever come out or whatever like that? But oh. obviously, it must have never come out to shelved at the time. So yeah, yeah that's 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 the funny thing, like. 
background on a little bit like you've had a lot of experience with with different you know um um labels and it's 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 things like that that can happen that people don't understand you know they think yeah. it's because you want a label that you about you know about to come out and you're gonna do all this stuff but it don't always pan yeah. out that way you know yeah so right. yeah so it's 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 funny being on a, on a label man um but uh as far as like music Hilarious. goes and th- yeah yeah <laughs> um how do you feel about the music industry like do you feel like through all the ups and downs do you feel like it's changed you or do you feel like you know it was a great experience overall or what do you feel about the music industry it's definitely changed me um but i don't think for the worse for the better i know how to maneuver through things uh, uh and i've done at this point i can say a good job with maneuvering through the industry and every everything that we know it has to mm-hmm. offer uh, on, mm-hmm. especially on the darker side and most of the time against what your own soul and spirit knows you're supposed to be doing and at this point uh, I, I've said no to enough things and stood strong enough to stand tall and say it, it, it never changed me as a person mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Amen. I've always I was always strong right. enough to keep my most of my moral standards and, and mm. that's what it is I'm here today because I did that Wow, man, that's a powerful statement right there. Because, um, you know, uh, I'm one of the people that that believe that, you know, when it comes to the in- entertainment industry, there's a lot of, you know, dark forces at work. You know what I mean? So um, when you say you turn down a lot of different things, so I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you say that. I mean, you, that, that says a lot about your personality because a lot of people might not have that same, you know, kind of strength and fall into some of them traps. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That, that can kind of take you either to right or to left or whatever, you know what I mean? And so, um, like I said, it's a testament to who you are as a person, man, because you're able to withstand all, the, all these years. So that's, I'm going to clap it up for that. I'm going to clap you. it up for that. <laughs> Thank Nick, you. Did, Nick, did you have a uh, question for him? Of course, I got a gang of motherfuckers question. And I'm taking my time. <laughs> I don't know about you, sir, but I'm taking my time, Mr. Anthony. All right, well, so go we're going to go back. We're going to go back to 2002, right? Um, okay. Now, at this point, your, your, your younger brother's in the group. Uh, didn't you guys meet Brian McKnight? You had a chance to meet Brian McKnight in a Soul Train event that y'all went to. It was like a Christmas special that mm-hmm. gave you y'all first shot. And also, we can't have this conversation without talking about your Uncle Drano. So, those two, if you can, those two, those, those moments create the back line. It's 2002 mm-hmm. or 2001. Brian McKnight, you know, we, we had the privilege to do a TV show with Brian McKnight. We, oh, were, the musical, we were the musical guests and he was actually being interviewed. Um, so we take us there, take us to that moment, create the ambiance, the, the moment, you know, okay. y'all there, it's you and your little brothers and Brian so, McKnight. It, the Brian McKnight thing is, it's kind of easy for me to, uh, explain that because that was the, one of the biggest, most memorable moments for us or myself, because it was the first time that brother ever performed together on a stage. Mm. Yeah. We performed. I'm so sorry, you gotta be patient with me. My memory's terrible. So I'm bad at dates and I'm bad at like pinpointing like it, like venues. But my brother me too. is amazing. that guy that guy right up. <laughs> you, you a good company. Okay. That guy yeah. above you. Yeah. Okay. I'd give you a pound too, because <laughs> we're the same, yeah, we're the same boat. You know, it's all he's good. He's sharp oh, as okay. a knife. He's sharp as a knife in the studio. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I would forget. Regular life shit. <laughs> yeah. He man. That's why. That's why I stay with the notes. Yeah, I gotta get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did our first show. You got the year. You said it. Um, mm-hmm. At I, I want to say um, it was down on Sunset, at this very popular club down there, on um, oh, man, I forgot the name of it. It'll hit me. But Brian McKnight. That's the first time he's seen us, and that's the mm-hmm. first time I ever performed with my brothers as brother, and he just. Long story short, he he start. We called up to his office. This guy named Silas White. Um, uh, got in touch uh, with us. He kind of was on the uh, like manager type side, and then uh, we just started working with Brian. We got in the studio. Uh, he immediately um, put us on that that show. Um, it was like a Christmas BET show. The BET Soul. It was a Soul Train. I, I had it written down. Soul Train Christmas Special. Yeah. That year that you were oh. talking about. And it was, yep. I know Bill Bill Withers was still alive, so he was like kind of mm. gonna think. Uh-huh. I want to say, so say it was Bill Withers. And then um, Brian McKnight sang and we sang this Christmas song that him that he wrote on Boys to Men's Christmas album. Mm. It's called uh, Never Thought. I never thought I'd fall in love on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's Juan was, Solo. That's Juan Ye Solo song. Yeah, Juan Ye Solo yeah. song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just one of the dopest moments for me because I, I grew up as a teenager listening to Brian McKnight, yep. admiring like Juan Ye was one of my musical superheroes. And I'm, here I am singing that song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. Shit, wow. Man. You got to like not think about it when you're in the moment or else you'll yeah. mess up. You know what I mean? You just got to, that's what I did. I'm not even yeah. thinking like until like now, moments like now. Man, yeah. moments wow. like now. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. So, so that, we, that was awesome. we, we're going to fast forward it's a little incredible. bit to 2003, right? Yeah. Um, your Uncle Dre, oh, he has, he's the CEO of what? Goodfella, right? Yeah. All right. So y'all. Y'all do the thing for Def Jam, and it, it, the documentary, which I thought was a one-off, winds up becoming a TV show, Brother to Brother, yeah. and with Jermaine Dupri and different things like that. So, in that moment, uh, what was that like realizing that you guys have won a TV deal, two a recording contract, three? Well, actually, I'm sorry, because that's 2003. That didn't happen to 2008. Why was there a, 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 a such a gap from 2003 as a five-year window? From all of this happening, from, from when I look, you already met Jermaine Dupri. You do the you do the uh, the, the Def Jam situation, and why mm -hmm. weren't you guys signed to to uh, to So So Def? I know Jermaine Dupri was like a president at the time of uh, Def Jam or or a CEO. Yeah. He was something at Def Jam at the time. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't that Ooh. released on released on So So Def? Okay, so those were a lot of questions. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, bro, take what, time. one at a time, me. Come on, me. My bad, my bad. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm eager to know. Although there were a lot of questions, you helped me with a timeline in my head. So here we go. Um, and there's a lot of moments that popped in my head from 2003 that you named all the way up until 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll explain it like this. Those were all grinding years for Brother. So that's mm -hmm. Recording yeah. hundreds of songs. Uh, performing at hundreds of celebrity basketball games. That's what we were doing yeah. in, in that five years. Ago. But uh, nice. to take you back, man, first of all, there's, there's three important names that you named, right? In Brothers Journey. My uncle, uh, Jermaine Dupree, and then did you name Shakir Stewart? Shakir Stewart, R.I.P. That's R. actually written down. Shakir Stewart. Those are the so three those, people that... Those three people in that, in that five years uh, really... <coughs> Uh, were responsible for discovery, right? Brian McKnight definitely, I wouldn't say he discovered us, but he he, he put his, he believed in us. He put his mm -hmm. time and effort into us and so, so he gave us us his time. So did Wayne Brady, who I, who I forgot. Oh, nice. Him, man. Mm, nice. We met Wayne Brady through Brian McKnight and this guy, man, I mean, he's probably the, the sixth honor, honorary member of Brother, this guy. Wow. That freaking phenomenal. Yeah. Heart inside, outside, that brother is like just love. Right. I feel that right. brother to this day, like, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. That you feel like you owe. Yeah. You know yeah. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Know, I would get him something just so great. It wouldn't even be about the money. It would just be about what he did for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Wayne mm -hmm. Brady is an amazing soul, and I want to give love to that brother. That's but, what's uh, up. Let's clap, let's clap it up for that. Let's clap it up for Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. Is he gonna have to smack her? <laughs> Man, I, 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 I got so many stories. We was out eating and somebody, like three white boys rolled up and was like, yo, dude, can you? He was like, nah, don't even, <laughs> don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down immediately. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, shout out to Wayne Brady. But my uncle, um, it's so funny, man. All these times that, now that I'm thinking about it, these times that I'm talking about in life, like the Dre time, say about a bell, the Dre moment, time when we got signed at that then and I started to speak to my brothers. All these moments, uh, when, at the time that I was experiencing, they never felt like lucky moments. It felt like, honestly, man, it felt like a bright light that God was providing. Mm. You know, like a way. Blessing, receiving your blessings, yeah. Bless uh, yes, it was a blessing. It was, it was mm -hmm. a receiving of a blessing that I knew wasn't just a one-time thing. It was about to change my life type blessing. All of them mm -hmm. opportunity. Yeah. So, and the main one out of all of those, you know, the Dre moment was amazing. But even after that, uh, I don't know if my brother Grady thought we'd never get that again, but we sure did, man. Because fast forward, man, my uncle, at all the smashing that we did in that five years, all the hundreds of songs, all the hundreds of shows, selling CDs on the street, man. I mean, you would believe me and my brother did. 
the record industry, man, I mean, it's all about relationships, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, we know that. Be the most talented person in the world and yep. preach. Somebody in the industry to sign. Preach. That, you know what I mean? Because you got to know somebody. So mm -hmm. yep. My uncle, man, knows everybody. But the one person that he knew was Shaquille Stewart. R.I.P. 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 And my uncle, you know, he don't really mess with us because he's, you know, he's 10 years older than me, so he don't hang out with us or nothing. But when you're smashing and as much as me and my brothers were, especially in L.A., the L.A. area, my uncle's going to hear about it. So mm -hmm. he heard about it. He came over um, and he he immediately like I'm, I mean, my uncle, when he, he don't mess around man. most people sometimes like back in the day, it takes months some time to sign a deal. But mm. he was like, he took us in to. Um, I'm, and this is why I'm gonna get bad because my brother Grady in here, so the my the story, the timeline is gonna get muddy, and I might. Put it's one all good. That's cool, another. brother. It's all so, good. Uh, with giving credit to all three of those people, my uncle Shakir and and Jermaine Dupree, the main person that gets the most props is my is my uncle and Shakir. I mean, I love Jermaine Dupree, but we still would have got signed. You know what I mean? Even if Jermaine mm -hmm. Dupree didn't like this. He loved this. He loved this. And so it worked out. But Shakir Stewart, when he was, I think, senior VP, I want to say, at, at Def Jam, mm -hmm. or, or uh, about to become president at the time he got signed, don't quote me, but I think he was. And so Shakir was the man. You know what I'm saying? He had Jeezy. Uh, he was hot. He was signing everybody hot. So when he took us in to Jermaine Dupree, who was about to get a position over at Def Jam, it just all made sense to me. My uncle believed in us. He took us in to Shakir. Shakir believed in us. He made a couple of quirks. Moved, uh, like, he, like, he was like, I think my, my my brother Jared at the time we sang to Shakir was beatboxing. And Shakir was like, that's whack. Don't ever beatbox mm. again. And wow. he Harsh. just gave it to us real, <laughs> just like that. Like, wow. he was like, that's whack. Y'all gonna be an R&B group. You need to learn how to sing. It's that support. Like, don't don't be, ever beatbox again. So we, we were tired to beatbox as soon as Shake told us to. Mm. Took us in to um took us into uh Jermaine Dupree. Uh we, we um gave him a five part harmony. So by the time we went in to sync with Jermaine Dupree, we had a couple of weeks. We made sure Jared was ready. He wasn't beatboxing no more, he was actually sank. So mm -hmm. when that's going <laughs> so you know, to Dupree, <laughs> we sing a five part harmony, man. Like, you know, wow. so, yeah. Boy, and and for those play, who so. don't know, as a vocalist, singing five part harmony live is a difficult task. I don't give a damn. And the studio is cool. Mm -hmm. I'm the king. I'm the king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm crushing uh, everybody in the studio. Bro, but when it comes to singing live, like we, Terry and I, we, uh, we got a group. You know, we were in a group together called 120. And okay. bro, listen, if you ask me, I'm going to jump on somebody note. The bling gonna be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was notorious for that. <laughs> the bling gonna be amazing. Now I've gotten better, but I just was like, look, bro, they don't know. They couldn't tell. Yeah. But when I when we, look, <laughs> when we hear y'all singing, brother, it's like, damn, I hear every note. And I is I think it, is it cause y'all are brothers that the blend was so that buzzing sound like the vibratos are the same cause we have, yeah, cause we're brothers. Yeah, that shit, man. Y'all unbelievable man we were man. man we worked for a long time man to achieve that i mean years. i was about to say yeah y'all worked and, hard on it on your craft and fights man i'm talking about fights yeah. i remember and, and something just hit me just now that i think is poignant that i need to uh, uh, point out before mm -hmm. i go into our reality show mm -hmm. you know that um james dubose who is the, one of the executive producers of our show with my uncle he um um he made us kind of audition for our own reality show because wow. he didn't believe that he asked us he was like so what why should I put cameras in your in y'all's faces in y'all's lives like what's so interesting about y'all and we just looked at each other like man and and we had just me and my brother Jared had just gotten a, a fight the other day this is wow. before before um James we both was talking to us we had gotten a fight because we we're at the pool of my home in the in secret and, I, and we, was, we was trying to sing. I was trying to teach him this fifth part harmony. I was like, man, we about to be popping. You got to know more beatboxing. We got to get you on point, right? And it's very, and c coming to your point, that is how hard it is. Jared was just an MC. 
So going from the MC to learn how to sing five part harmony, tell me, let me tell you how hard it is. Mm. Jared's a Brazilian guy. He's like a street guy. He, he, he went to juvenile hall and all this stuff. So he's tough. But he was finna give up, man. Oh wow. I, he he I came to Denver, Colorado. He came from Denver, Colorado when he was 16, 17, to LA to pursue his music. And then it's kind of just start moving fast. So all of a sudden he's in this group uh, with all his brothers being told he gotta sink now, right? We're at the pool. Mm-hmm. We have a record deal with Def Jam. We're about to get our own reality show. A lot of pressure for him, right? Mm-hmm. We're at the pool, and I'm trying to teach him some new, some new edition harmony from, uh, from uh, uh, actually his voice. Yeah, new edition, but boys to men's rendition of new editions. Uh, I, uh, can you stand the rain? Yep. And he's messing up. He's messing up so bad, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I got a cuss. I was like, epic, nigga, just go back to Denver. <laughs> I was like, nigga, you whack, nigga, just give up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My other brothers was like, we, we grew up, we grew up singing, right? So yeah. for us, so when this fifth party just wasn't getting it, he was flat, and I knew he was finna, and I was just like, nigga, just go home. And I was a little hard on him all the way, but he walked away. He was like, nigga, all right, I'm out. Walked away, right. man, and all my brothers looked at him, and they was like, don't do that in. I was like, man, fuck that nigga, man. <laughs> two, two, two minutes later, that nigga comes back and walks. He was like, "Come on, man, what's the note again?" Wow! And end up yeah. it. So we had to reenact that scene to James Dubose just to get the show. Wow! What? We had to, Shit. Yeah, we had to reenact it. He's like, "Oh, y'all really went through that for real?" He's like, "For real." And he gave us our own show because. Of that. Yo, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, see, well, 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 me, well, you and Baby Boy, we could have got a reality show because them two, yeah, <laughs> bro, the, uh, the brother that you seen when we first came on to the uh, to start the show, we put him backstage. That's our uh, our third member. That's our, our brother, Baby Boy, and oh. Baby Boy is the you, like strong vocalist power. And he'll tell you, man, fuck you. <laughs> you ain't <laughs> Yo, coming, no, right? <laughs> fuck out of here. Like, yeah, baby, be ruthless. He's better now, but he used to be ruthless, better. boy. Listen, we, like we, what? What are you talking to? to? <laughs> listen, check. So we're about to do 106 in Park, right? Uh-huh. So literally, it's 24 hours before showtime. 24. This is a live taping, bro. These niggas get into an argument over the bed. We not talking about like bad note, bad this over a bed. And T War, uh, you know, like when you go to BT, they tell you they give you an itinerary of what stuff gonna be in, yeah. what to wear, what not to wear. Mm-hmm. He decided he gonna wear an all white shirt. That's one of the things they said. Please don't wear an all white shirt. Right. T decides to wear it. Being rebellious. <laughs> I don't even remember that. To be honest with you, I'm like you. I don't even remember that. I'm like yo. I swear to God, I don't even remember that. <laughs> so these, these, these is getting to an argument, bro. And I promise you, it's the funniest shit ever. Yeah, he was always talking about clothes. Oh, you shouldn't wear that. Don't wear that shirt. Why are you wearing brown? Nah, 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 nah. All the time. All the time. So, yeah. Yeah, we can like go you. on and on about that. He'll tell, him, he'll tell you in your own crib. Get the fuck out. Nigga, this is my crib. You get it. Bro, so. <laughs> yo. Hey, those, are, those, are, those are the beauties of being in a group. Oh, man. Yeah. So, yep. two, Different personalities. So, let's get to the show brother to brother, right? And, and and your first album, yeah. Uh, you know, that first album, y'all had a single on there, uh, two singles that I, I really like. Well, three. One y'all didn't make a single, which I thought was fucked up for me as a fan. <laughs> I, I wanted to say this to y'all personally, because y'all could have y'all could have pushed for like this. Like this was a hard record. It was. And that John y'all did with Duran. Duran from One Twelve. Yeah. Damn. And and, yeah. and the John RL did with y'all. That was a hard. Those two records. Yeah. Make you love it. Make you love it, yeah. bro. Hard records, bro. And I wrote one of my favorite songwriters. But um, take yeah. us take us to the first album. Your first single is uh, I, I can't I can't feel the music or something like that, right? Yeah, with, mm-hmm. with yep. I yeah, that's the one. I say I say I can't feel because you know y'all niggas singing too good to can't hear the shit. So that's cat. <laughs> that's cat. But y'all did the record with Fabulous, man. So how was that doing that record and coming off a hit show? Because the show was a hit. We waited for a second season. and I was like, all right, what the fuck. We'll get to that too, but yeah, in the yeah. first season, what was that? What was that like? You know, having a hit, a hit record and a uh, hit show. Man, so yeah, uh, shout out to Fab. That uh, shout out to Shake for that man. That connection right there. He just made that happen. Like Shake, like Shake. Everybody loved him, man. So he, all he had to do was make a phone call. He didn't even tell us 
that Fab was on the record. We just made the phone call and made it happen. And then like one day we mm. just like, yo, we just put it on. And we just started crazy. Uh, so that's why mm-hmm. that's why Fab at the beginning of the record like, Shake, I told you I got you, homie. I guess Shake mm-hmm. was calling me like, yo, I need a favor. Because we hadn't met Fab like, up until that point. We met him after the fact. Like, we met him at the video shoot, I think for the first time. Oh shit, I just had an epiphany, wow, bro. Crazy. On yeah. the record, fa- on the record, Fab say, Shake, I told you I got you. Just said it, Shake, I told you yeah. I got you, homie. Hey, Shake, I told you I got you, homie. Hey, what's up, brother? Yeah. Oh, nigga, that shit cold. Yeah. yeah. That shit cold. Right. Okay. So yeah, I remember him saying that too. Like he didn't know us, but he Shake called him. and was like, "Yo, I need a favor." And he's like, "Shake, yeah, I got, I got you." So that's mm-hmm. when we started our, our relationship with Fab. We turned out to be super cool, down to earth, of course. Um, that whole experience was great. It was just great, man. Awesome in every way. Um, me and my brothers, um, it was a, a, a lot of it was more awesome for me watching my little brothers, Jake and Pop, go because that was their first record deal. You know what I mean? Me and Grady had got signed to Dre and we had had- Y'all were a duo. Y'all were a duo at first, yeah, right? You and Grady? Yeah. yeah. Well, we started out a duo and then we had my man Jeff uh, made it a, a, a trio. Okay. Uh, when we got signed to Dre, so it was the three of us. <clears throat> we went to high school with my man Jeff. He was mm-hmm. like a bass, a real super bass player. But uh, yeah, so Jake and Pop, this was their first deal. So just watching them, being able to experience all this was great to see as well. But uh, yeah, man, we mm-hmm. it, it was awesome, and then the reality show. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'll say, man, about the reality show is um, that's the only time that I was smiling all the way up until this moment. You know what I mean? And then just when the reality show got thrown into the picture, it just seemed like a I won't say unnatural, but like just this ain't meant to be here like this you know what i'm saying we gotta adjust hmm. so it was kind of strange strange timing our- so it it, it kind of <clears throat> yeah it, it but it was a learning experience in hindsight but at the time it was like to say stressful is an understatement it, it was kind of like uh, it, it was a it was definitely a test you know what i mean to see it, you know what i mean it, it tested us it tested all of us in our various ways Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you as far as like that goes, like we all know that, you know, even though the reality series, you know, um, was there a lot of things that they asked y'all to do almost like maybe started some stuff so y'all could, you know, have some more drama or, or was it all like real life situations? Um, you know, uh, somebody just answered this question online the other day. I can't. It's one of one of the reality show guys and he answered it so perfect. I'm going to think mm-hmm. it was, but it was kind of like, um. It was all, we were us and it was all real, but they gave us situations uh, mm. that, they gave us situations now and I think back on it that they knew probably as creators of the show and people who want to try to get drama and stuff like that happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you put, you know, us in that particular situation, something's going to happen. So like, mm. you know, we're all going out to a restaurant and you know, for free, let's go eat. Oh, who's paying? I guess the show. Okay, free drinks right. for everybody. Really? Right. Yeah, okay. Here we go. It's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. It is there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. they never came to us. Oh, there was only one time. Uh, this was ho- hilarious. I mean, I hear on a lot of shows that they have to kind of manipulate people with us, but that didn't have to happen. But uh, <laughs> y'all didn't need it. But one time, man, <laughs> First, I think they, they were filming for about six weeks and they were there like 12 hours a day, right? But mm-hmm. for the first like week or two, it was popping, right? Every day it was just something because everybody knew we had a reality show and it was just something every day, a fight every day, it seemed like. Mm. And then so much, so many fights the first two weeks. I remember being in my room one day and I was just tired. My body was weak and I just wanted to sleep. Of course, that's not really exciting TV for reality if, 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 if some person sleeps right. all day. Right. So I'm sleeping in my bed, which I'm not really used to doing. It's like 2, 2 p.m. And one of the guys on the show comes in and says, hey, there's all the action. You know, <laughs> get out of my room. There's <laughs> <laughs> all the action at. Like, this is some bull crap. Like, stress, stress level. Like, wow. Like, this, y'all don't even care about our lives or nothing. Y'all just care about rating. Ratings, exactly. Ratings. That's it. 
Yep. That's that's why they instigate a lot of those situations. You know, people throwing drinks in each other's faces yeah. or, or they'll set up two people to meet at the same time that they know hate each other. They do right. all that stuff, man. They do all that be, stuff. It might be, uh, you know, it might work with, with, with a reality show where everybody's their own character, but with a family who's not ready for that, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you, you don't know the damage you're doing. It's a that. recipe. It's yeah. a recipe man. for destruction. Yeah. Right. And that's what I was I was already saying, like, cause y'all actually a family. It's not like y'all, yeah. it's five guys that they put together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all, y'all actually relatives. So airing out business on, you know. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, all that. Don't tell me like people gonna actually do stupid stuff and. Yeah, that that's why it's important with this show. We chose not to ask some of those questions that were like, man, that's corny. Like we not that ain't celebrating nobody asking yeah. them about some some goofy shit that. Yeah. You have to relive and then you got relatives like hey why the fuck you say that nigga? i thought we did it that you know what i'm saying so right. just to keep right. all that away we just gonna add we asking you questions to create this timeline and i don't think it's really enough time to really go through your whole story so yeah, you've done a lot brother, brother you've done you a got lot. a lot going on bro and i yeah. hope that in <clears throat> retrospect you sit back because i seen in an interview somebody was interviewing a, 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 a older artist and i asked myself i said why don't they interview artists like yourself more you get what i'm saying because you you out in la you know a, like you know the ins and outs of, like i said like brandy how come nobody pieced that together if you're a music here you heard brandy's first album dedicate and mm -hmm. her thanking you guys i you know a, about I, I, go ahead, have, brother. Uh, I have a theory about that and you know when you're in the music not just the music industry but that chase especially out here in hollywood is what they call it in la man it's like that the lack of uh communications and everybody knows everybody through some some way or, mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. the reason why everybody doesn't support one another like they should man is i don't know man it's just fear that because like i said everybody knows everybody but certain who won't say certain names because they might be scared you know what i mean like it's that, I, i'm not gonna say specifics but it's all it's all based off of me you know what I mean? Mm. And it's not, it's nothing good about it. I, mm. I'm not like that, man. Like, I, I'm hoping for the opposite. And I'm, I am the opposite. I will reach out, like, with you, okay, for case in point. I didn't even do, most people do their due diligence, right? And I'm not trying to support uh, not doing that. But when you asked me to be on you guys' show, I didn't Google you guys. I didn't Google your real names. I didn't thank God, you thank God for your show. <laughs> you had done they got warrants. <laughs> uh, uh, why? Because I really will will do an interview for almost anybody that that shows interest in wanting to interview me for the right reasons. You know what I mean? I, I don't mm -hmm. care how high a person is, how much money they got, how how low they are. I treat everybody the exact same, mm -hmm. and I think that's a problem in Hollywood. Like there's this. Can, wait, can we clap? Can I we clap I'm, that up for a second? I think I'm what you just now said, that was powerful. What you just said, man. Because the industry that we all in, it's like it's 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 not like that at all. It's kind of like dog eat dog. You know what I mean? And it's I'm like everybody's I'm a, I'm right, you. right, exactly. You all know, stepping up. Mm -hmm. But again, Step there's, listen to the. I'm going to cut you off, T. My bad. But there's <clears> names that the brother mentioned that that as an artist you would you would want to meet these people, brother. You were in a space. You and your brothers and, and, and y'all were in a space where artists like us, we wish we can be in that space. And and and, and I could tell you a shitload of things that we've done, but it's like it don't compare to brother, y'all were there. You laid your eyes on it, you touched it. Bro, you played you, you was the motherfucking voice of Michael Jackson, my boy. That's crazy. No, man. That's a blessing. Could, that's a mm. bl at, at, at twelve and thirteen, singing your face off. Seeing Brian McKnight, meeting these different people, having a relationship with Brandy, uh, and you know, being on seven TV shows, several different TV shows, yeah, bro, yeah. be having your own TV show. Uh, it's a, the unfortunate thing is with the wedge it may have caused, and I don't know if it did or didn't, but I know it put stress on the family, the family dynamics in your situation. Mm -hmm. So, on a on a lighter note, y'all did a record with Brian Michael Cox. Mm -hmm. Cause she's gone. Since you've been gone. Like? Since you've been. No, I, I, I put my own thing. Is she gone? Cause it, it hurt <laughs> deep inside when I heard it. I know. I know the lyrics. I'm a fan, brother. <laughs> I know it. It's just she gone, man. Like, 
what was that like working with Brian Cox, man? What was that? Uh, Paul. Uh, Brian Michael Cox. Okay, first of all, shout out to him. Uh, he's he's great to me. He's he's a great mm-hmm. producer, especially for R and B. That guy. I look up. To him a lot. Um. Uh. At the time, oh, man, I'm so bad with names. I'm so sorry. Uh, the guy that wrote. No, it's all good, man. His name. Can't, uh, give me time to remember. I remember, he's very important in the story too. Um, but he wrote the song. I remember his name when I when I can. And uh, it's funny because the story. I'm I'm not proud of this story. I'm about to tell, but I'm going to tell it. It's, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's he's been funny. gone. Uh, was he wrote that song and Brian Brian Michael Cox produced it on the spot. I saw him. Um, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Since you've been gone, it was day twenty six. Y'all got uh, she's gone. No, we got we that since you've been gone was our song first. Day twenty six. Holy we, shit! We, yeah, talk yeah, so about it. Part of the whole story. Wow. Okay. Okay. Talk Nick, you jumping it. ahead, man. Let, let the man tell the story, Nick. <laughs> Cause I had a record called uh, uh, Too Late. But I, but I was thinking that too, though. I was thinking that too. Since she be gone, I thought that was D twenty six. But hey, yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. tell the story. Tell the story. <laughs> She's gone is Corner Boys. Oh, I oh, love Cox Corner Boys. Gone. Yeah. Since she been gone is Brian Mc- Michael Cox, who Day twenty six was on their album, but they that was our song first. Wow. And I heard wow. the demo version on YouTube. That's crazy. Yeah. So so this is how they got it. So it was our song. We um, we were in the studio. Brian Michael Cox did the beat. Uh, me and my brother had just went through divorces. And I'm talking about right before we got our deal. Me and my brother Grady, we used to be married, previously married. Uh, wow. And uh, we had just went through divorces, not even a year before before I'm telling you the story. And then, um, and uh, so we were both still heartbroken, right? But I was like, yo, let's just go get this money and try to get our minds off of it. We'll, we'll get better, we, but we were like down and out, right right before we got our deal. But we got our deal, we cleaned ourselves up, and uh, uh, Since You've Been Gone was one of the first Heartbreak songs that we had to record, so mm. writing it. Adonis, that's his name. There you go. Adonis, <laughs> really, really great writer. So my man writes it, we go in there, and, and me and Grady, <laughs> we, we're like crying. And wow. In the studio, as he's writing, I knew that was going to happen when you said that. We were crying. No mm-hmm. joke. And uh, so much so, uh, Sh- Shake was clowning us. My uncle mm. was like, man, my nephew was up here crying, man. He was like, <laughs> he couldn't believe it. He came down and he clowned us or whatever. But yeah, man, we recorded that song first. And then uh, it didn't end up going on our album because my uncle and, and Shake didn't want us to be like simps. You know what I mean? They wanted us to be players, like more players. So. Day 26 got it and, and took it, and copied some of our eyelids, some they made themselves. But I like what they did with it. It sounds good. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's yeah. crazy because I was I thought B. Cox wrote She's Gone. Uh so my apologies to the it's corner boy. No, nah, don't worry about it. And apologize to you guys. All right, yeah. so when 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 recording as a lead singer, right? And this is questions that people uh people <clears> that don't know, as a lead singer of the group, did you do a lot of the vocals yourself? Or did you guys go in there one at a time, one person at a time? All right, Brady stack you, Papa stack you, Jake. You know, did y'all do it like that, or you just went in, did majority of the vocals, and then y'all just rehearsed how y'all rehearsed? How did, how did that work? So before we had our deal, we, um, you know, I had my own studio. Of course, that's how we all recorded hundreds of songs that we did. Mm. But it we it, it took a major shift on um, when we got our deal because before we had our deal. Uh, if you go back and listen to all our stuff, whether it's on YouTube or you just used to follow us back then, um, we there was there was no lead guy. I wasn't the lead guy. It was like we were equally. That's why Jerry used to be box because he. Uh, it was like uh, we all got a verse. Jared always rapped or did the bridge, but no one person sang more than the other. So when we got a mm-hmm. deal, it was their their decision to turn me into the front guy. It was not like oh, if it was wow. up to us, we would have been more on some like you know, on some Fuji's type, like all of us get a turn type, you know what I mean? But oh, that'd be dope. Mm-hmm. They, didn't mm-hmm. that. they didn't, they wanted a traditional RB group with one guy out front, and that one guy was me. So we had to, we had to get our mindset on that switch when we got our deal, which wasn't easy because I don't like being, I don't like attention anyway. My brother Grady loves the attention, 
Cheyenne loves the attention, like they love, you know, but I'm more on the shy side. So me being out front all the time was kind of strange. So it was just a, a little adjustment we had to get used to, but I don't think um, most of us adjust. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was what. Well, yeah. Oh, can say go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing too. Um, was it uh, because they did that? Was there any kind of animosity because of that? Because like, well, man, you getting all the parts or whatever? Did that that's, that cause well, the strain or whatever? Well, that's kind of why I made that face. It was like not all of us. Yeah. Adjust, if you know. Right. I mean. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. In my opinion, not all of us adjusted. Mm. I ain't gonna hold you, eh? Uh, as good as you fucking sing, I will hope you messed up at least once in the studio. Like, hey, listen, you and guess what? you hear, I homie? Did. I did. <laughs> hey, in, in case in point, sorry to interrupt you, Christopher. No, you good. Case in point, um, my all first of all, my brother Shine is super dope. He's so dope that there are there has been a few times, not often, but mm -hmm. that I've been in the studio where my voice has been playing out, right? And this is great. This is so great to have where when you have a great vocalist behind you that can step up. I remember RL, he uh remember you said he wrote making that episode. I seen that episode. Go ahead. I remember that episode. Okay, so he wrote another song too for us called Kleptomaniac, right? My man uh -huh. Big Oak produced it. And uh this was I think the last song we recorded before we left uh, uh Atlanta. And uh dope song. It didn't end up going, but um, um at the end of the song, Ariel wanted me to go. He was like, Okay, it's your time to go. And uh I think I was a little faded because I knew it was our last night, so I was just got drunk with my girl Lisa at the time, my girlfriend Lisa. Uh, uh <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I haven't thought about her in a minute. Brings, brings back great memories, yeah, I see. Great memories. But, uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, I was kind of playing out. You know, I was I was up in my, my high, high natural, high register. And I, I, I specifically remember looking through the booth and seeing Shine get up and take off his coat. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's my turn. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, yeah, go, go ahead, Pop. And I let Pop take the song out. You know what I mean? So, mm. you know, I'm mm -hmm. out, but... You know what I mean? I don't think that that I don't think the attitudes were in check. You know what I mean? I don't think that mm -hmm. were in check. Yeah. Not on my part. Like I, I I had no no uh 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 I can truly say in all sorry fellas I can truly say in all you you know, that I I never and never will have no animosity towards my brothers in regards to competition is concerned doing music. I never compete with my brothers. Mm. Because I always looked at it like we're on the same team and we're we mm -hmm. against other people. Mm -hmm. So any competition that went on between us, unbeknownst to me, was unbeknownst to me. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. never me. I was never competing with my own brothers. I want that to be known. Ever. Right. I don't I don't I don't think uh as a fan looking, bro, you you're not you're not a bad lead singer to have in the front, brother. You definitely a, a, a Ralph Tresvan type of Thank you, man artist brother and I, and I wish the world could have really embraced it how it should have been and even if the world didn't embrace it the urban community because y'all were like kind of like the like the last of the r&b groups I know. like the real last of it man yeah. um so you got any questions because i got about three or four and these are some some great ones because the next Go one ahead. is about so you yeah 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 um so i was going to ask you like if there was anything and, and and if this is one of those questions that you don't really want to answer that's fine but um to hear you go through your story and to see some of the thing uh some of the things that you went through would there be anything you would tell the younger you to be like nah avoid this don't say that don't do this is there anything that you would change in the past nope nothing uh, okay. For, okay for me myself uh um nor do I care to know, to know the future because one of the exciting things about life for me is figuring it out. Mm. It's exciting. That's powerful. The journey is I love it. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know what, wow. you know what I mean? I'm going to clap that up right there because <laughs> there's a lot of people out there be like, yo, if I could just have the answers just so I know which way to go because you know life gets hard. You know what I mean? But I love how you said that you're like, well, you know what? I'm just going to figure it out. Fuck it. <laughs> so I like that. Um. <laughs> Oh, I did. <laughs> Caught me slipping. Nick, that's a fine, right? That's a fine. <laughs> that's a fifty. That's a fifty. Oh, uh, I seen fine. some. Yeah, man, gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. <laughs> um, I know you talked about. Uh, you was online and you was talking about. Uh, it was like a post that you made and you were talking about the um, the metaverse. And um, you were. I think you were about to unleash some or put some music out there uh, on the metaverse. Can you? expound on that a little bit yeah, um did you or did you you did that you did that right okay so 
Uh, this was, I, I want to say a year ago now. Let's just call it a year ago. I can't believe it. About a year and a half. Man. It was, a, yeah, it was like an right. NFT type of genre, like a year right. and a half. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So this is when nobody was really up knowing about NFTs. Yeah. So you yeah. were. So, man, I'm so glad you brought that up because it gives me a, a, a because it's not, it, 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 I'm not over with it. I'm not done with it. But the reason why okay. it's taking so long to come to fruition is because, like, like, like my man said, like, nobody really knows what it is you know what i mean it's so hard to, mm -hmm. to try to describe to the layman person who you know what the heck it is like even nft yeah. non-fungible token like even what what is that i still kind of mm -hmm. don't know what it is but i'll try to explain what it is it's like yeah it's like owning owning something digitally like some art mm -hmm. of some you know let's just say um like a mona lisa right uh, mm -hmm. You can own a digital Mona Lisa, so to speak. You can be the the sole owner of that whatever that piece is, and so it mm -hmm. could, depending on what what whatever that art form of artwork is, over a period of time, if you're the owner, it could go up in value. You know what I mean? If that artist dies, it yeah. could really go up, and and then you own something, you know, and you sell mm -hmm. it later, you know. Uh, but anyways, so that's what it is. But all done digitally that's the that's the thing where it gets weird so it's like yeah for myself the reason why mine is so it's taking so long is so out of the box is because it's a music video. so my mm. that i have behind it is this, this lady named Susie and this company named mouse house i think that's how you pronounce it they're in the uh well they did it already but they're still in the process of taking my music video it's the last music video i ever recorded it's called black history right it's also a song that i put out like you said I, I, it's been two years so mm -hmm. two years ago i put out a song on uh halloween so i guess it would be a year that called mm -hmm. black history year. and uh okay. I, I shot a video to it with the sole purpose in mind of it, of it being my very last music video that i'll ever star in so that's was the whole pitch behind selling the nft it's like do you want to buy Anthony Harrell's last music video that he's in and he'll never be in mm. another sort of thing? And mm. so it's just a video. It's, and the cool thing about it is it's me and my family, me and my, my boys, my youngest daughter, uh, Sunny, who she's two and a half now. So back then she's probably one at the time he shot it and my wife. So it's just all of us wrapped up in a, a little short three and a half minute music video that we shot here in our city, home, hometown of Barstow that we live in. And, uh, it's getting spliced up. Let's say the video is three minutes and 30 seconds. They're splicing it up into like, let's just say 100, 100 edits. And then mm. instead of one person buying the whole video, you get a chance to be a part owner of it. So you could buy like five, a five second slice, 10 second slice of it, and be an owner wow. of the slice. But they're trying to figure out how to do that and, and then sell it and auction it off. So that's what's taking so long. So it's not over yet, though. Be on the yeah. So that, that's all like a new process, right? Cause I, I remember um, uh, my friend like two ago who kept trying to get me on the NFTs and stuff. He's like, yo, you got to jump on this, man. It's going to be the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, you know, he's like, well, you don't want to be like a year or two down the line and miss your boat, you know, because it's going to be big. It's going to be big. And I was like, eh. like you said, I, I didn't know nothing about it. So I was the interest was really like, you know, I was like, OK, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I never yeah. got into it. The best way to describe it uh, in layman's terms is you, if you are interested in doing it, you have to just think to yourself, what would be a good investment? What would, what, what's something that I could buy where like in 10 or 20 years that would definitely over a period of time or something could happen where it'll go up in value and then mm -hmm. I could just sell that mug for 10, 100 times what it's worth. Mm, like okay. imagine, like, imagine being, like property. Imagine okay. Yeah. Imagine being the sole owner of, this is a, a, a bad um, uh, example, but I'm gonna just use it, of, um, of, of the Rodney King video. Let's say, <laughs> mm. anyone that owned that Rodney King beat that, when they beat Rodney King back in the day. Yeah. And then yeah. like somebody 20 years from now, I was like, yo, I'll, I'll buy that for you from a million dollars. And you own it digitally in this wow. digital wallet on your computer. You're the only owner of it. It's, it's wow. like that, you gotta find stuff that you think is gonna be worth something. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? Like in my case, yeah. let's just say I die five years from now, and that is indeed the last music video I ever shot. Whoever owns that, don't you think that mug's gonna be worth a little? It's stuff? gonna go. Yeah, it's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Most, de most definitely.
Shit. Okay, that's, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, that's thinking ahead, bro. Forward thinking. That's yeah. that's what this shit is created on, man. And yeah. I, I I'm looking at the time, bro, and I don't want to hold you up too much, man. I know you a busy guy, so we're gonna ask a couple more questions, and we're gonna zip right by because there's one important question that most of us wish we could have done as kids or as young adults. Is you got you actually had the privilege of working with R. Kelly or getting a record from R. Kelly, mm-hmm. and that was on um off the second album that you guys and I went to go get the second album and I didn't see it, so I think mm-hmm. the label dropped the ball on that. But it, uh, single was off of uh, vac on on the album, the album Vacancy, excuse me. Yeah, I got the burp. So I see you burping, you passing that shit on, right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was on a, it was on the Vacancy album that record y'all did with R. Kelly. Uh, what was that like, man? The video because it was a change from. The I can't hear the music. She's gone, mm-hmm. and then y'all came out like, like, listen, we some hard ass niggas, and we we ain't taking nothing from nobody. We gonna sing flat toes. But y'all went from <laughs> dancing to like Joe. So y'all went from boys to men on New Edition. <laughs> to I'm like Joe. I'm, I'm glad you said that because we were more boys to menish before we got our deal than we were Joe. To see and my uncle, mm-hmm. that was all my uncle's chain. Mm. Mm. If I had to give my uncle credit, that was all my uncle. He was like, nah, y'all ain't gonna do that. Y'all ain't gonna wear that. Y'all gonna look like this. Y'all gonna look like that. Cause my uncle's fly. Yeah. He was always a fly, fly boy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you out of jail. Yeah. You know, that was all my uncle. Shout out to him for that. But um, when I lost my train of thought. So we'll, we'll You're working with R. Kelly. Okay, R- so R. Kelly, that R. Kelly, that R. Kelly record. So yeah, that was amazing, first of all. Um, Cause we grew up listening to R. Kelly. He's one of the greatest mm-hmm. for me. He still is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Musically. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the way it happened was just like something out of a movie because we we didn't meet him. Okay, so um, I'm not quite sure who made this happen, but I'm I'm, I'm positive it was Shake. Probably. He just knows everybody. Shake and my uncle because we, you know, we were um, recording vacancy, going through the process, and then one day my uncle called us and, uh, we have recorded this, this song called Talk Box, uh, produced by um, Mad Scientists. And I think, uh, yep, so Ryan told me. Hmm. Uh, Ryan, Ryan wow, told me. okay. From, um, Jersey yeah. Boy. Sis, Jersey Boy. He's from yeah. Jersey. Yeah. Sister Act 2, Yo. Uh, City High. Yeah. He wrote. He was on um, Usher. City High. That was a group. Usher. Yeah, City High. He, he was a big part of Usher's confession album too. So he yes. wanted. He pent a lot of records on there, bro. Yes. So yeah, we are B hands here. Rhythm and views, baby. Okay, so you already know. <laughs> I, when I'm pausing, now, shout out to him. Salute to him. Man, mm-hmm. Salute to Ryan Toby. When I'm pausing, fellas, it's it's because I'm thinking about names. That's you know what I mean. So just mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. When I'm doing that because I have a good brother. Yeah, Ryan Toby, Mad Scientist. Shout out to them brothers, man. They they gave their all to this this album vacancy man which in my opinion would have went down as one of the great r&b albums ever um unfortunate that it didn't happen that way and it's never too late i'm never you know you know it's 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 there you know whoever owns it owns it and and if the spirits come together and the, the, you know align and all that maybe just maybe but the world will get a chance to hear this album of the way it should be heard because man let me tell you we caught our first album was was cool. It was cool because we worked with such great producers and writers, and we were, you know, we weren't new to this, and so we, 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 mm. it was good. But mm. boy, when I tell you, between that time and when we recorded our second, we must have caught the Holy Ghost because that <laughs> second album, man, we that was y'all good. too. That was y'all. I think that would have been y'all too. Rick Ross, Twister. R. Kelly, I'm about to tell you this R. Kelly story. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, 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 so I'm, I'm thinking, I'm bad with names. So R. Kelly, right? My uncle comes to us with mm-hmm. this song called Talk Box. We're still recording. And then my uncle calls me one day and he's just like, come down here. Uh, I got him on speakerphone. And I'll never forget this moment over there at my house in, in Reseda. Lived in this duplex where, you know, we had to come down, run downstairs. And I was like, yo, uh, my uncle's on the phone. Come down. Uncle, uncle's on the phone. And so I put him on speakerphone and he just started playing talk box. And this is how we end up doing uh, One Day on This Earth, too. So this was our introduction to R. Kelly. Uh, mm. So he comes down and then he plays talk box. And then, and then my verse goes, pop goes, pop's verse goes by, hook goes by. 
And then when the bridge hits, we hear R. Kelly's voice, man. And me and my brothers just start going <laughs> crazy. I think I threw wow. I I a ballpoint pen in my hand and I threw it and it hit one of my brothers. I was so excited. Or it hit the ball. <laughs> We, we were just screaming, man. We were screaming so much. We had, my uncle had to like play the song again so we could hear it again because we didn't even hear the part the first wow. time. R. Kelly was on Talkbox the song, so he had he had jumped on our song. Man, we were through the moon, man. We couldn't even we couldn't even anyway. So after we calmed down, we listened to it a million times. Uh, we we had you know made a relationship, a a a, 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 a creative relationship with R. Kelly. He messed with us, yeah. man. That was just huge to us, man. Because R, wow. if R. Kelly messed with you, man, creatively, you already know it's just like a feeling of like, what is going on? Like, yeah, yeah. R. Kelly? Wow. <laughs> After we get over yeah. the whole trip, man, um, fast forward to we get pitched the song One Day on This Earth, which he wrote. <laughs> we, get we get his demo, and it's a great tune, but we, we're all sitting there with my uncle, like, how is this? Go, go, you know, our album vacancy is about sex. You know, this, this, how is this going to fit? And we don't care. My uncle's like, we don't care. This is an R. Kelly song, and we're we going to do it. It's going on here. <laughs> I don't care. It's going on here. <laughs> video too. We don't, I don't mm -hmm. care if it ain't about sex. We're doing it. So, yeah. in the studio, and I'm, I'm, I, you got to hear this story because it's, it's, it's just, it, you could take so much from this story. So, yeah. In the studio recording that song, first of all, it took four sessions to record one day on this earth. Right. Um, because R. Kelly is so picky. Uh, mm. The first time we record it, we just go in there thinking, our, you know, thinking our ish don't stink, our balls are big. Yeah, we're just going to do it like the demo. We go in there and, and think right. we both producing it. I get on the first verse, Pop gets on the second, Jake gets on the bridge, Brady's on the hook, all over the place. We send it back. R. Kelly's like, I hate it. Tell him to rewrite <laughs> Hell it. No. Hey. Wow. Send it back the second time. We we clean up some stuff. We, we do what we think he, he wants us to do. Send it back a second time. He's like, I hate it. Tell him to re-record the entire thing. Wow. <laughs> he gives us a couple of things to do. And then we re-record. I'm, I'm hand to the sky, man. I'm telling you. The third time, um, my uncle comes back and he says, I want you to sound just like R. Kelly. Mm. Man, it was the most, it was probably my, my most frustrating moment in the studio ever. Because mm. I, I, I can... I can deal with like not being able to hit notes and like maybe doing it a hundred times because my voice is cracking or losing my voice. But somebody trying to tell me to sound like somebody else, like literally he was like, you're not sounding like him. Like you gotta, you know, he, he says this word like this. I'm like, man, I think it's from Chicago, man. I'm from LA. I'm, <laughs> right. you <gotta> like that. <laughs> I'm like, you want me to try to like sing like that? And my uncle's like, just do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I wanted to go crazy, but I did it, and it worked, man. Cause he was like, I only want that that one nigga singing the song. He don't, he didn't want none of my other brothers on the song, man. So if Yo. you when you really listen to One Day on This Earth, it's all me, with the exception of I think Pop. You can hear him go oh oh in the back on the bridge, but it's all me, backgrounds and everything, because R. Kelly said I don't want nobody's voice on the song but that. Nigga. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Uh, you know how cold Robert gotta be. I I want just that one thing on the song. And it, I know it broke my brother's hearts, man. I know it broke. Oh broke. man, I can't even imagine. In their face, when my uncle said he only wants Ann on the song. I saw it. Oh, it broke my man. Brother. It's a business and that's R. Kelly and we gonna do what he wants. Wow. We still got an R. Kelly song. I don't give a fuck who's singing. Right. We got, look. This 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 my group. <laughs> this, this, is my, this is my group right here. This is my group right here. Like I'll be lying to the hoes. Hey, that you hear that right there? That ain't that nigga. Aunt. That's me. That ain't aunt. that's me. I'll be lying and everything, bro. But all right, so look. So you got any more? Because I want I want to get into the Boise music. Uh, Boise music. That shit. That seems like that's your label, or is it like a movement? Because I saw you had a couple of artists on there, and um, yeah. a little bit of both. You you had a you had a single right, uh, alcoholic. Mm. It's like a rock fit, bro. Listen, this record, it felt good to me. <laughs> I, it felt good, like no no cap, because they had took such a break. It felt good to see at least one of the brothers yeah. doing something. I know I know Papa and um, I think of Papa and Jake or Papa and Pop, Jake, Jake and Pop, yeah. Jake, Jake okay, and Pop, okay, they, yeah. They did they did the duo thing for a yeah. second. Yeah, they still doing it, right? I, I thought they still doing it. Yeah, they're still no? doing it. No? Okay. But yeah. I, I'm talking about like just to see 
Ant or Anthony or Mr. 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 Harrell, <laughs> just to see him like, you know, I'm like, this nigga still got it. What the fuck is going on? Man. Then I, I, I went to your I went to your Instagram, I went through your uh your YouTube, and I'm like, yo, this brother still still got Creepy. genius. I don't, say, call me what you want. Call me what you want. Yeah, I'm, 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 creeping. <laughs> look, look, I, I ain't no no cat. I felt like a little, a little, a little hoe because I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm all right, like D- Nico six or nine, little hoe. Go ahead, yeah, little hoe. I, I, I'm gonna like this picture, <laughs> but I ain't gonna like this picture because I don't want the nigga think uh, like it's weird or nothing like that. Like the whole, like the whole thing say, Nick, 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 Nick. <laughs> like, like, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I ain't want to be weird. So it took it took me a minute to even reach out to the brother because, like, yo, bro, like we we all men and I'm, we God fearing men, so I don't I don't put no no man over over no other man. But yeah. I look up to you because you and your brothers because you guys did what a lot of us as R and B artists yep. strive yep. to do, brother. Especially mm-hmm. coming from an era where groups was the thing. You yeah, understand yep. what I'm saying? This this Hell is this yeah. is your this is your interview, but the group was a part of your history. Mm-hmm. As you can see, we'd have, we'd have been an hour almost fifteen minutes. And we still, we just now get into Boise music, get into alcohol, get into, right. you know what I'm saying? The other singles you had on there. You know, you mentioned one of your singles that you released about a year and a half ago on mm-hmm. Halloween. And I like the alcoholic record. You feel yeah, me? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like the alcoholic record. If y'all yeah. get a chance, go to uh, Boise. That's, go that's a special song for me. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm, I, I need to go peep that out for okay. real. Because I, I was going to, I don't even think, do we, do we even touch on Kathy? Was that the name of that was the name of the album that you had, right? Um, and my wife, yeah. Yeah, we don't even talk bro, about that, but we're going to deep. It's so much, that, man. So <laughs> it's much, a lot, bro. I know. And and we're enjoying this interview, bro. And I and like like we try to make have fun with the with the guests because I watch interviews and the guests they like they don't they don't do they do diligence to learn what the artists that they, what they did in life. Yeah. What they you know what I'm saying I watched one interview that you did and I. He called you Anthony Harrell or something. So I'm like, hey, you should clearly you like, ain't. That ain't it. That ain't that ain't it. <laughs> clearly you you didn't do your due diligence on, on her brother. You know what I'm saying? And it, like he didn't mention none of the stuff that I know that I know for a fact that I, I, we couldn't even get it. I'm like, oh, we're not gonna talk about them other niggas. But bro, which questions you got, T? I'm sorry, cause I'll talk. I Yo, I was here yeah, cause I'm about to uh, uh, jump in and ask you cause this this is kind of like off the uh, not off the books, but this is something I kind of want to know since. Kind of like my group, we kind of did this a little bit. Not like y'all, like anything like y'all. But how do you feel? Like, what was it like, you know, um, learning the choreography and dancing and singing at the same time? Like, how did that make you feel? Like, did you enjoy doing the choreography? Did you hate it? What was that like? Man, uh, it was extremely challenging. It, extremely challenging. Because you did some really, you know, intricate moves and stuff where y'all, y'all all did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, man, that's the, one of the questions that I'm glad you asked. And because uh, it's a very good question in regards to especially groups mm-hmm. that want to sing and dance because um uh it's it how do i say it okay so bef- we naturally at heart are more of a vocal group than a dance group, right mm-hmm. we look up to voice the men who i that's what that's probably my favorite group of all time and they're, they're just vocal they're just it's ridiculous that's that's nick's favorite group too yep <laughs> perfect so that's who we mm-hmm. always kind of strive to be like, especially me and Grady. And so when we started Brother, we were more, we more so took our vocals like serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when we got our deal though, uh, uh, we knew we had to step, you know, Jackson 5 step we looked up to. Um, right. But, but it was more challenging for us because I think they made us step too much. You know what I mean? And by they, whoever, whoever powers that be, we thought we needed to be stepping that much. Right almost b2k ish you know what i mean yeah like, yeah we, we, in my opinion we shouldn't have been stepping that much we should have been more smooth like new edition because okay. if you they're still performing to this day man 30 yeah. 30 years later and yeah even bobby you, you know up there you know trying to cabbage patch and get down you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right you know, right because um of the style of dancing shout out to him because that's why i say it's a challenge those that can do it especially over many years it's it's really hard because uh, one of the one uh, performance in particular that I can think of is the one we did at ASCAP. It was I think it was New Editions, either twenty or twenty fifth year anniversary. Okay. We were able blessed enough to uh, Mar- marvelous McIntyre shout out to him uh, mm-hmm. out of uh, ATL. He mm-hmm. in the shape, so we were able to 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 do um if it is in love 
We did like we mm-hmm. did a couple of songs, man. And New Edition was sitting right there in the front row, all of them. Crazy, crazy. And, uh, and it was hard. If you go, you could probably look up that show. It's on YouTube, YouTube somewhere. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. You can actually hear throughout the performance, and we were in tip-top condition. I wasn't drinking. Nobody was drinking. We were uh, up rehearsing every day, running every day. Tip-top condition to be able to pull off this one performance that took less than ten minutes, and I was out of breath. On it, wow. on if it isn't love. So shout out to Rob Sessions. All these years, it, it and, and Neo too, man. Anybody that dances. And, and Usher, the ultimate, that's a lot, is the ultimate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can sing and dance at the same time. Chris and Breezy. <laughs> Chris Brown, too. Yeah, Chris Brown could do it. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But, so, but Chris ain't on roller skates. This nigga Usher on roller Usher, skates. Man, it, if Usher and Chris did a, 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 a versus, together, a versus, it would be great, but I'm going, I'm, I'm, I got Usher. I want to be on records and, and just, just say I got Usher. I got Usher, too. I got Usher, too. Brother. Okay, cool. And I, I like that's Chris Brown. That's my dude. I love Chris. Yeah. But but we know we know and not not to get off but we know what Usher did after that after that Usher album when he came with my way. It's old. Killed him. Killed him. <laughs> Eighty seven oh one. Mm hmm. Killed him. Killed him. <laughs> Triple killed him. <laughs> yeah. Still. Wow man. Day, man. Sounds great. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So it's it's difficult, man. I think I'm uh, uh, better now at doing it, you know, because I know you know how to do my breath control and all that. But it's difficult. Hard. Yeah, y'all killed that, man. Y'all killed that. Nick, uh, did you have another question? Yeah, I, I got two more. Um, I know uh, you got a band with your father and your and your older brother. Are y'all, are you guys on a band together, or you just gig from time to time? Because it, so, it, yeah, me and me and my older brother Grady are in a band called JB Project. Uh-huh. Uh, my dad's not in it. It's just me and my older brother. It's, it's oh, he just is in a picture looking fly. Y- yeah, <laughs> he, he, he does. He does gig with us from oh, okay. time to time. They'll call him in as a specialty act. And give him the big money because he's been doing it so long. Give him uh, mm-hmm. uh, a double the amount we get paid only for hours of work. <laughs> double wow. scale. Mm-hmm. Double scale. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, double scale. Uh, JB Project, me and Grady's band that we are with, with uh, 12, uh, actually, it's 12 of us all together. It's great. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, because it was a brother, the brother from Third Story I seen on, um, yeah, he did a show, Gavin. My man Gavin, who you Yeah, he a beast. The Third man. Story. Well, they they, be, they became uh, chapter four, but he used to be in third story. You already know, mm-hmm. man. He's in the in the in JB project too. So, to that's why I said God. Like that. Remember, what I told you, told you he always mm-hmm. provides that opportunity, that light. Brother yep. broke up. Yep. You know, Grady is. I'm a little more stronger minded than Grady because when we when we go through, we've always go through our dark moments together for the most part. But every time mm-hmm. we're in our dark moments together, Grady will. I'll have to pick him up. You know, he's always been the big brother, but in those darkest moments, I have to pick him up sometimes. Mm-hmm. I have to be like, yo, man, we'll, we'll, we'll get there again. Don't worry. He'll always live in the past and be like, could, like we'll never get the opportunity again. Like, when mm. brother broke up, and then look at us. Now, JB Project is like the top band, in, uh, one of the top bands, I should say, in the company that we work for. It's based out of Beverly Hills. And Gavin is in it, who I think is the best vocalist personally that I've ever met. And I've always looked up to him. Mm. We've always been cross rivals because he was signed to Def Jam. We were. Mm-hmm. And, and now I'm in a band with this dude, and so God, mm-hmm. God, yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when's so, y'all man. next show, brother? Because we got it. Because all three of y'all are some vocalists. Y'all some singing fools. Thank so you. yeah. And you know we got a band now called Village Bridge. So y'all holding <laughs> on to that title for now, but we coming for the we coming for the crown. Just all get right, your heads Village up. Village Bridge. <laughs> yeah, Village Bridge. Give it. Uh-huh. Just give, give us give us some time, brother. We be we be on y'all heels here. All right. Yeah, yeah. Give us some time. <laughs> give us some time, brother. But um. <laughs> What's what's next? What's next for Anthony Harrell, Mr. Anthony Harrell? Let me correct myself. What's next? You got the band of JB JP, excuse me. Yeah. You got that. You got that project going on. Are you guys dropping any EPs, creating any music, or is just straight live shows? And, and, uh, okay. What's next? So what's next, brother? Currently, uh, the JB Project is a band. It's a. It's really, for lack of a better term, a wedding band. But we don't mm. just perform at weddings. You know, we we did Justin Bieber's wedding um, about four years. Wow. Ago. Wow, yeah, wow, okay. I mean, it, it's like that's dope. It's, 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 it's stuff like that, you know, like it's the upper echelon, like it's all like really great stuff. You know? like, I'm blessed to say I can do this stuff. Um, it's not like your normal, you know, Adam Sandler wedding band, wedding singer type ish, you know. What I mean, this mm-hmm. is you know, another oh, level stuff, type man. stuff, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's the ultimate level. So, um, I'm doing that now. So, unfortunately, like you said, like uh, you guys can't come to the next show because they're all private events. 
I mean, you could you could come, but you'd have to sneak in. Like you, you put on a suit, you act like you know you gonna crash the wedding. Well, we we'll go through the back door. We ain't got yeah, no problem with that. The <laughs> brother, drink on at the bar. Brother, I'm six that. foot, six foot two twenty five. Brother, I, I stand up. I stand up. <laughs> They gonna be like this nigga just got out of prison. We, he, he don't belong here. Bro. He don't belong. He, he don't belong yeah. in here. Who's that right there? Get him. Bro, Get him. They, when, we, <laughs> when we used to do shows, they used to think we was a rap group. Like we did the job for um, we was, remember East, Remember that job we went to? Uh, I don't know if it was for BT or it, remember when the bro when the bros was filming for MTV, and we went there. We did a show with Day Twenty Six, and we turned around and went up to uh, mm -hmm. East Side High. Oh yeah, uh, man! You're not talking about Poughkeepsie, right? Nah, nah. was it Poughkeepsie? You talking about that show? Nah, uh, 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 North Jersey, East Side High, with uh, the Lean On Me Boys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I remember that. Yeah. So we're in the bathroom warming up, and a dude came in, and was like, uh, "Who's that gospel group in there?" It was just three of us singing. He's like, "Who that guy?" It was a, a BT gospel. Show. Long story short, we wound up singing on the gospel channel, and we like, we ain't even a fucking gospel group. You know what I'm saying? Group. Wow. So, <laughs> Cussing and everything. <laughs> I fucking. I, I, I literally forgot the point I was a great make with that, but in any case, <laughs> it happens to me all the time. In any case, the point I'm trying to get to is I would stand, we would stand out like a needle in a haystack. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, well but I would like, I, I, would but I, I purposely you. accept that invitation. If you ever want to give it that invitation in the future, I'll take I it. Will, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every once we'll come while, through because we, we just performed um, last month or in February, late February, at this outside type of function in in san diego so that was like we every once in a while we'll have a gig where it's open to the public so i'll let y'all know but mm -hmm. anyway so live performance that's what i'm doing we're at the um we're really busy we work every weekend so it's great so on the live performance side that's what i'm doing that's not going to stop anytime soon okay. um but then on the creative side um and I don't know how to say it, but I'm retired. <laughs> oh, I, oh no. Uh, oh, I almost had a heart attack just now. Enough, oh, enough, man. <laughs> you just enough, broke my man. fucking heart like a like like we was in a relationship, huh? <laughs> man, <look>. Right here, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I, I, oh no. I, I, I happened to be on y'all show when I said it publicly, man, but I, I don't know how to say it other I feel like Rocky right now. I mean, right. I don't know how to say this, but I gotta retire. <laughs> you know, but you know, like hey, but look. But I, I I have a quick story to help you to, to you know not hate me so much. I've done, right, <laughs> please, please, brother. Please, I'm brother. Gonna try to, I'm gonna try to explain it to you like this, man. I'm not gonna be yeah. With this make, make it make sense, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try to make it make sense. I might mumble because I, I haven't rehearsed this, but I know I'm gonna have to explain this to a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I told my dad this year a year ago, and he just looked at me like he just didn't believe it. So, um, I guess I might have to just do it to make him believe it. But I just put my it's just so funny how stuff happens, man. How stuff correlates. I just put my final mm -hmm. single that I called it out on May 3rd, which was today, the day today is the 9th. So that's six right. days ago. I put this song called Bob Wiley out specifically because to make it my last installment or my last finale or the last song that I'm ever going to release as the artist Anthony Harrell or as an artist, period. Um, and, um, the best way to describe it, man, is, um, and I'm gonna try. There's many ways to describe why I'm at this destination in my life that I'm at. It's a beautiful destination. It's a, uh, it, I'm at a beautiful place. I'm at the place that I've searched for my entire life. I'm at the place that I need to be. I'm at the place where God wants me to be. And I'm not talking about just in my personal life, but in my creative life, musically, um, without being too cocky. If I died tomorrow, I would thank God before I took my last breath and be happy to go wherever he wanted me to go after that. That's how content and happy that I am right now from everything that I've experienced since I've, I got to LA when I was 13. And now it's time, the place that I'm at that I told you guys about, it's time for me to take all of those gems that I had learned about throughout my whole career, and it's time to hand them over to my, my kids. And the only way for me to do that is the right way is to give them 100% of my time. Um, mm. To be honest, the other way, I'm not getting anything out of you. 
that gets everything. All the all the stuff that an artist gets out of uh, selling uh, music in person, putting out, out a, a music video, putting out a song, uh, everything you get out of that, or going to record. I don't get anything out anymore. And giving it away. I don't. I don't. Have you heard, ever heard the term in the Bible? Giving your throwing your pearls to swine. That's what I feel like I'm doing. Mm. I'm, I feel like I'm giving, I'm taking my time and creating all this beautiful music and giving it to, to, to fucking people that don't deserve it. So Bob mm. Wiley is right. my last gift to to everybody that's ever followed me. Uh, listen to it. Uh, it uh, you guys would appreciate it. Um, it's really giving glory to God and everything that he's given me. And, and it's about the happy place that I'm in. Now it's time for me to teach my sons and my daughters everything that I know. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm not saying quitting and I'm not, I'm not, my uncle seems to think that I shouldn't say retire. My uncle Trent says I should start saying reserved. I'm gonna reserve mm. my talents for somebody else. Wow. Oh, that's, yeah. that's dope, brother. That's that's powerful, man. That's one of the most powerful oh. things I've heard in recent days, man. Gee whiz. I honestly oh. feel bad. I honestly feel guilty, man. I'm like, damn, I done said this shit like like I nah, was a jaded dude. female and you done nah, came nah. and was like, I I got responsibilities <laughs> that but I'm trying what? to if, if if somebody uh everybody that watches this and follows you and, and hears me announce this, I won't have to make it a major announcement like this no more. This was it. Be like, go watch go watch rhythm and views, nigga. I already said it. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> but, but we do. What you do. Uh, we, we always understand, dude. You're a creative, so you, that's not going to stop. So you can say you're going to retire, Never. but you're Never. a creative. Like, yeah. that's just in you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm joking about you know, like, being mad about your retiring, but I understand it. But you still get to get it out on the weekend. Absolutely. You still get to be Anthony Harrell on the weekend. But you, from Monday to Friday, your daddy. Yeah, right. Hey, it's homework, it's mm -hmm. schoolwork, right. it's responsibility. So I get it, brother. And that's mm -hmm. kind of one of the reasons why we became a band because for one, the band money's a lot, a lot better than, than trying to do right. what we were doing. Right. You know, getting a publishing check here and there is cool. But that, that band money, man, hallelujah, amen. Bitch, don't fry in the kitchen. <laughs> Bitch, don't fry in the kitchen. But brother, we're not going to hold you, man. We definitely appreciate you. And Mr. Anthony Norrell, please tell them where they can find you at, where they can find Boise Music at, where they can find that new single that you talked about. Where can they mm -hmm. find you at, brother? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have a heavy online presence, but uh, my heaviest online presence is on Instagram. You can find me on Boise's Music. That's spelled B-O-Y-Z-E-E-S, music. Uh, on Insta at Instagram and uh, all my updates are there my birthday is coming up my 46th birthday is coming up May 31st happy early uh, birthday brother happy early birthday you, brother clap that up clap that up and I, I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna release I already released the Bob Wiley song which is my final song on May 3rd but I'm releasing a visual to it on my birthday so look out for that and then like I said um, that'll be my finale uh, as far as publicly as an artist but you have to follow me continually after that to get any further music, which you w will. You just won't get it the traditional way. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the NFTs that you were talking about. I NFTs or I won't NFC? go into detail. I won't go okay. into detail. Okay. If, if okay. you follow me, you'll get music. You just won't get it the traditional way. All right. Well, Make some fair, noise for Prince, Prince Anthony. We're going to oh, put a tattoo. You, we're going to put man. the tattoo thank on his face <laughs> that just say, artist right there there you go he said, <laughs> i love prince man he said the hell with the system man i'm doing it my way there salute you to you brother thank you brother we had a great time with you man i hope you enjoyed yourself i, I hope the most Earth. high continue. i enjoyed myself <laughs> i hope the most high continue to bless you brother um i, I see i see life in your eyes as we talk brother so mm -hmm. i definitely appreciate it's thank my you, and my brother's Humble, humble, humble. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And Thank you, Nicholas Terrius, right? Yes, Terrius, yes. Yeah, I appreciate Terrius, you. Brothers, man. It's, it's well, luck. Much love, love to you, man. That you have this much, much interest. And the reason why, I want to clarify something before I go. The reason <clears> why, I'm glad you told me to take those moments, Christopher, because the reason why I try to speed through stuff is 
because niggas don't be giving a fuck, man. Like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be a lie to you. You're right, man. I'm not it's jaded. That's true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm jaded a little bit because niggas don't be caring about my story sometimes. So when mm-hmm. a nigga really reaches out and, and actually comes prepared and cares and know has some information, like, damn, this nigga really cares. Okay, let me let me not speed through it. Let me appreciate mm-hmm. it, too. I, I, I went through a moment like that, and I, I appreciate you for slowing me down, man. I really mm-hmm. thank you for that, man. Thank that you It's important. Now, it's not that's it's important to the viewers because there's somebody out there bro remember when yeah. we were younger there's somebody out there that's watching right. and if you rush through it those little pieces there's a whole bunch of shit we could get into and oh, we'll yeah. revisit it as yeah. time progresses we, right. we definitely want you back on the show but absolutely absolutely it's, it's it's really about you and if they know they know you from bet that bet show mm-hmm. then it's like here today going tomorrow yeah but now we're not doing that these right. moments are for you we like mm-hmm. we, we're going to you're going to see a bunch of different people that we grew up on and that we interview and it's really about them so we don't want them to rush through shit yeah right. like we call it giving y'all all y'all flowers now you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah uh, man, if, if nobody know. don't tell you we gonna tell you you know how much you all you and, all appreciate and, it and this Too is what black people need but black people need to tell each other more like right. brother from my brother terrius to me to my family we love you brother love because you that's a that's another thing that we don't do we don't look in the mirror and say we love each other right. or i love me so i look in the mirror and tell myself every day that i love myself so by me telling myself i'm telling you as a melanated brother we love you brother Absolutely. keep doing what you're doing and you will be hearing a happy birthday from me you know what i'm saying i'm not the the whole talkative type but I, i'll check on you from time to time brother it's dope, because it's you, you yeah, don't you don't know we don't know mentally as a people we go through shit. Yeah. And as a and as artists and show business, like people around you, they expect from you to be this multi-millionaire. So right. if you do anything that's regular and normal, motherfuckers look at you like you fell off. Yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. bro, I'm t- I, I got know. responsibility. Right. Yep. Bro, yep. it's an unfortunate and it only happens in our community. Mm-hmm. Because any other any other community, brother, people like yo, your brother should, you and your brother should be able to go out and get it work right now. You want a, a number one rated show with millions of people that watched it. Right. Yep. There's no reason. But that's all another conversation, yeah, bro. Yeah, I know. Bro, that's another conversation. We could talk for like another two hours. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> I don't want to hold you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Hey, 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 you sound like my motherfucking grandma when you said it. Like Christopher, that's how my grandma called my name. Christopher, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucking thug in these streets, grandma. I'm out here. <laughs> nah, man, but it's love, man. We wish love you well. Man. Anytime uh, you want to come back, man, come back anytime. We'd love to have bro. you. Thank you, brothers. Mm-hmm. Hey, happy, brothers, man. happy mm-hmm. early birthday, brother. I don't happy celebrate early birthdays birthday. or different things like that, but I celebrate the individual in life. Yeah. So, me happy, too. happy fall or not the the vagina day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have fun, man. All right. Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth and have a good time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, peace and blessings, man. God absolutely. bless. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, man. Thank you. All right, all right. So we we are back. So uh, that was a very interesting interview, and I really feel like um, everybody on here has been somebody that I've enjoyed. But this right here, this it just did, it touched me. You know what I'm saying? And maybe because he was in the group, or maybe because of some of the things he was saying. But he 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 got that man. He got that. He's he's very um, um intellectual brother. Got a lot to say. He's a very interesting individual. Um. So yeah, man. So I, I, Nick, there's anything else that you want to say about that that powerful interview we just had? The, the brother, uh, like I said, man, and, and no pun intended me saying brother, but everybody has a story. And that's just a small segment of that brother's story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's more things that we could have, like, bro, look, look, look at, look at. This whole list of things goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, you can't see it by screen, but yeah. <laughs> but, but this is me scrolling. These are all the questions I have for the brother that it's like it's just too much to get into and i didn't want him i didn't want the brother to rush through it because mm-hmm. even, even with um it's always the ones that got the real story that mm-hmm. want to rush through their story you notice that yeah. when we interview yeah well it's like he said it was like because of how he's been treated you know what i mean so i'm so glad that he noticed that on this particular channel he's not gonna get all that he's not gonna no. get all that and that Speak. goes for anybody you know i mean tell you tell your story tell your story if it takes us fucking four hours to go through it We'll go through it, you know what I'm saying? Well, well I, I don't know about all, I don't know about all that. All right, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm mess, I'm mess, <laughs> That's because that's a lot of editing right there. Yeah. And I, had a, I enjoyed this interview. This yeah. shit, I look, I look forward to this shit the whole week, bro. 
yeah, we gotta have to have him back for a part two because there's too much stuff that we that too we didn't even, we, even we didn't even get into. But uh, but yeah, man. So that was you know that that was it right there. So um, hopefully y'all tune in every week. Make sure you hit that uh that subscribe button, press like. that like button. Let's take it, press that like button, baby. It's like a booty. It's R and B. What you want? It's R and B. You know what I'm saying? So do all that. If you like everything that you're seeing right now, oh, and make sure you share it too. Share this episode, like he said. You know, share that love. You know, uh, let this man's story be told amongst all of the internet. Let the whole world know. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody needs to know about this. He's a very special and very talented artist. And there's more to come. There's more to come. So, uh, so yeah. With that, nobody, with that being said, you know what I mean? I, I, I thank you for being on here, Nico609. You know what I mean? Co hosting these, these great interviews. And uh, we'll be back, man. We'll be back. Oh, see. All right, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Where they, where they find you at, bro? Where, they, where, where can they find you at? You oh, already asked me. You're already here. You're already here, people. You're already here. You can find me here, or you can find me at Terry's Music, or you can find me at Terry's Night because we just do the name change thing. You can find me there, but just check there. You find me. We all there. Where you at, brother? It's like doodle, baby. Listen, you can find me. <laughs> you, you, you can find me, Nico609 on Instagram, Nico Morton on Facebook. You can also follow, obviously, Jersey Boys120 on Instagram. You can follow 120 on Facebook, Village Bridge. Shout out to Baby Bird. Shout out to Baby Bird and the Ebony Sparks. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, Village Bridge will be live June 13th at Kelsey's in Atlantic City. We'll be live also June 23rd at Wilson's. So check us out, man. Get them tickets. If you ain't got it, go get it. If you ain't go, go get support. It, go support these people, man. Go support that. these great talented artists. Oh, T, we got an EP out. 120 has an EP out the morning after. Go get that, man. Go get it. Go download it. Go stream it. You ain't got buy it, baby. Just stream it. Just, yeah, get it's on like, Spotify, like, man. You know, listen to that thing. You know you like it. It's that R&B, like baby. It's R&B. We sang it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we sang it. We sang All right, it. baby. We appreciate you, brother. We appreciate, appreciate you. We put you in backs backstage. All right, man. So, you know, it's been a very long show, but a very entertaining show, very enlightening show. You already know what it is. It's our, it's, uh, I'm about to say our music. <laughs> it's Rhythm and Views. <laughs> but it's all connected. You know what I'm saying? It's Rhythm and Views, man. So, the, I'm the host, Tarius. I'm saluting y'all. Love y'all. I'm going to catch y'all on the B side. Peace.